Of course it is. <laughs> Yes, so um, good evening, Virgin Islands and anyone else out there, internet land, because you never know who you're speaking to uh, when you go online nowadays. You never know who's receiving you. Uh, this evening, the topic may have begun in a very sorrowful manner but we have two very powerful and determined sisters, literally sisters, <laughs> that are channeling it into something powerful and productive for our community. So I'm gonna let them go ahead and introduce themselves first for those who don't already know them. And then we'll get right into what is going on because it's definitely something that's needed for everyone. It impacts everyone directly or indirectly. And we want to make sure that those who can attend on Sunday do, and those who can't, you figure out what else you can do. So, good evening, and thank you all for making the time to, to do everything that you're doing. Um, you can go right ahead and, and start either okay. Andrea or Colette. Mm -hmm. Okay, good evening, I am Colette Smith. I am Andrea's sister and Aaron's aunt. And I believe Andrea will explain to you who Erin is or, and who she is. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I am Andrea Hamilton. I am Erin's mom, um, the 14-year-old that was shot on July 9th. Um, we, uh, since his passing, I am, I've been reluctant and to not let my son death go in vain. So I have since then started a foundation in his name. It's the Aaron Nicholas Hamilton Ashby Foundation. And it's with that foundation is where I will, um, my son will live through that, through his foundation. His, the legacy of Aaron will live through his foundation. Our first event is scheduled for Sunday, October 11th. Um, I don't know why I was thinking March. <laughs> and it's a March. <laughs> why? <laughs> it's a March that's happening um, 7 o'clock in the morning on October 11th from Crown Bay on the west side. So if you live on the west side, you do not have to run all the way to our Tutu Park Mall to be with us to March. We're actually marching simultaneously from both ends of the island. Um, and we hope that you'll come out and join us. Okay, I wanna provide a little history here, or a little, um, lay the foundations a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, the, found, the foundation's um, mission is to create a thriving environment for children and to establish an all boys academy focused on whole child development in the USVI. And, pri and, and before we get to that big overarching goal, there are small goals that we're hoping to accomplish on the way that will lead us into that All Boys Academy. Hence, the Reclaiming Our Village March was born. Um, and what we're hoping the event will do is to provide the foundations for leadership, um, and this will be a, a relationship between the leaders and the adults of the community to connect with the children through pos positive mentorship. So after the march is done, the work continues. We plan to reconnect with the adults in the community and find out whether or not they were able to form uh, partnerships with children in the community who may be in need of those partnerships. And if those partnerships have been formed, what we plan to do is to direct those um, individuals to some of the various resources within the US Virgin Islands. So we want this to be a continuous thing and we'll measure success um, in, in a number of ways. If, we, if we're able to create a lasting and positive mentorship that will deter a child from being pulled into the streets, that's a measurement of success. If we're able to just provide 
in under similar circumstances as we have here, some grief counseling for a child in need, that's a measurement of success. So, so that's the foundation of what's going on here. Excellent. And it's not for people who are saying, oh, not another march, you know, um, the main thing that, that I want to definitely get across is that this isn't just another march. And even just saying not another march is a little concerning because if people had not marched, there are different, different things that have to take place in order for change to be effective. If people had not marched, we would not be voting. We would not be doing all sorts of other things that we're not able to do because they marched. And their marching helped to spark so many other things. Uh, so for those who have that thought, or for those that you know that have that thought, uh, please help them to dispel, dispel that and let them know exactly what was just mentioned, because this is not just about marching at all. That's correct. It's not just about marching. Um, for the year of 2020, as I understand it in the USVI, more lives have been lost to gun violence than the dreaded COVID-19, okay? More lives. More um, lives. Okay. More lives. 40 lives, to be mm -hmm. exact. And what have we to gain from this? Aaron is gone. There's nothing we can do to get Aaron back. Right. However, here, here's the perspective. We are, tr 40 lives are gone, never to come back. What we are trying to do through this march and the work continuing after the march is to save number 41. We don't want for, 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 for number 41 to be gunned down in the street, like number 40 and the ones that came before 40. We don't want another funeral. We don't want another family in grief. That's what we're trying to do. This is a huge thing. And in order for us to be successful, we need each and every person in the community to support us. And support doesn't have to be coming out and marching with us. Support can be cheering us on. Support can be donations of water, donations of fresh fruit. Support can be the clergy coming together in the community um, and praying with us and, and guiding us and directing us. So support comes in many different forms. So that's what we're looking for in, in, from the community. And this is not just another march, it's a movement because there, there's work to be done after the march and that's where things get serious and even then we're looking for the communities to support us yeah um and i i guess some of the questions that often tend to come up are um okay so we are not gonna fix this what can we really do because there are so many, so many factors that have created this issue long before now, long, 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 long. Mm -hmm. And what are we realistically trying to achieve? Um, mm -hmm. Can you speak to what your goals are uh, with the foundation? Uh, I know the march is just a spur off, a spin off, mm -hmm. but what, what are your goals ultimately with the foundation? Ultimately with the foundation, what my, um, goals are, are, you know, where my thoughts were going with the foundation is to um, first and foremost, um, secure the mental health of his friends and his classmates and his handmates. I have heard from several of his, several of his peers and it's now um, on Friday, it's the night, it's gonna make it three months since Aaron is no longer with us and no one has reached out to these kids to sit down to, with these children, to sit down and talk to them and understand where they are. So that's one of my goals. My immediate goals is to secure some type of outlet for them to be able to sit down and talk about their feelings and discuss their feelings and, you know, about the situation and how they feel about it because they are who we really need to hear from. Um, 
and you know and how they feel about it and you know what changes they themselves would like to see that's my immediate one of my immediate goals and um there there are other underlining issues at this moment that i don't want to touch i know we need um quicker response time um to 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 and from a crime scene um one of my big pet peeves i want to see nothing more than more um men on the ground men and women on the ground which is uh uh vipd um as opposed to one street the whole neighborhood i want to i want to be able to to build, build that bridge between the community and our law enforcers because these are our neighbors they they live amongst us it's not like new york where they work in the Bronx and they go back up to Peekskill. No, they live right here in the trenches with us and they need to be here with us. Um, that's another one of my goals to, to bridge that gap. Ultimately, my ultimate goal is, because for me, after this tragedy has happened, it, it's for me, it was, it was just one, one incident after the next and all you keep you, you were hearing everyone talking about what, oh, you know, this person got shot and who they think it is. And it's, in other words, it was indirectly glorifying these cowards, you know, that are taking other, you know, taking people's lives as opposed to, and there's so many different positive male role models here in the Virgin Islands, but we're not hearing about it. Why? Because we're trying to deal with a situation um, so my ultimate goal for my son's foundation is to start an academy, an all boys academy. I don't want no female impression in that school. Their mom every day, every night and every morning, all males so that they can surround themselves with positive male that would inspire them to be positive and do positive things for the community. Yeah, and, and that's, there are many approaches. That, that is one that I know has worked in other places. So um, I definitely wish you well on that. And I'm sure that there are other people in the community that may have a similar vision that could support. Uh, many, we, one thing we have in this community are a lot of creative people, a lot of talented people. Uh, the support structures, though, the foundation, the infrastructure of organizations and, and movements and different things, though, that's where we tend to, to need some work um, because there's so many ideas and sometimes duplicate ideas, which nothing's wrong with that. But then we don't get enough traction moving forward or it takes a really long time and people get burnt out and, and all mm -hmm. of that. So I'm definitely wishing you well on uh, many of those goals and if we could for right now for people who are just coming in um, can we repeat again what sparked this for you and about the foundation just so that people are aware yes um what sparked this for me was july 9th when my life was changed when my course was changed to mm -hmm. where i am now um on, on, like my sister said, if you're coming in, we're on a mission to save number 41. Um, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's and to speak to, you know, you know, it's 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 not a it's not a, a, a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and it's gonna. I know it's gonna take me some time, and that's why I, I I'm trying to bring that village together because it is with that village is how we will be able to service our children of the village. Um, and when one, when one person is burnt out, we are able to pass that baton on to the next person. And when that person is burnt out, we're able to pass the baton on to the next person. But if we don't groom our children now, that when we are burned, who are we going to pass it on to? So we have to, we, we, it's, it's long overdue, but it, it, you can't look behind you. Like I heard someone said, that's why you don't have eyes in the back of your head. We have to look forward. 
and and that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing now with his with his foundation. I'm looking forward and trying to n not let another mother have to go through or endure the pain that I'm feeling right now. Um, I, I have something to add to that about um, why we do this or why we're doing this. I think in a sense, we were destined to do this and I'll explain to you why. I have a little story, um, something I'd like to share, something personal with Aaron's, he was, he spoke to me, I would say about two weeks before he was killed. And he called me late that evening and he wanted to know, he, he was exploring the topic of utopia. Mm. And, and he was exploring that with me and kind of probing, asked some probing questions. To, I mean, to be honest, I think I was too sleepy to <laughs> give much thought to what he was saying but i mean if anyone knows aaron he's a deep thinker and um and he challenges you and he he was challenging me challenging me that evening about where is the perfect utopia where do i think it that it exists is it in the bible is it here with us on earth and um, he called me out because he, you know, well, I fell asleep. He heard me snoring. <laughs> and he said, Auntie, you're not listening. And I said, yeah, 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 I'm listening. And, and I think in a sense now, he's forcing me or I'm being, not forced, I'm being compelled to listen. Because I think he was laying the groundwork and asking, where is the perfect place where a child can exist in peace and feel safe mm. that's the first part of the story mm -hmm. um on during lockdown um i said you know what when lockdown is over i want to come out of lockdown with something tangible um that shows i had a constructive use of my time and i said oh i gathered all of the yarn that i had stored in a closet for years and I crocheted a blanket for my mom and it came right in time for her um, 86th birthday and I presented the blanket and I felt so pleased with myself. And I sat with Andrea, Aaron's mom, and I said to her, boy, I made this blanket. I want to do something bigger. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, there were some uh, memorials in my neighborhood, um, not just a block away. And I said to her, you know what? I was thinking about making some art projects and just placing them at memorials, just leaving a happy note um, anonymously and leaving them there. And, um, and I said, what do you think I should do? And I thought about an angel and I said, oh, I can't crochet an angel. And then I said, a heart. We decided on a heart. And she actually went through um, YouTube and found me videos of how to crochet these hearts. This was the Monday. And then the following day, she called me and she says, did you, you know, what happened? Where's the project? I said, ah, I didn't start yet. So I worked the Wednesday and I called her back and I said to her, I made my first heart and I'm ready to go place it at a memorial. That was the Wednesday. The mm -hmm. Thursday, July 9th, she called me to tell me that Aaron was killed. And mm. I feel in my heart that I was crocheting that heart for him because I, mm -hmm. I, I put it down and forgot it. And um, it's after I returned home from attending the funeral, everything else, I said to her, here's the first heart. It was crocheted and it was finished that Wednesday, not knowing that the following day I would be, you know, coping with this news. So saving that heart and when I come back to visit my nephew's gravesite, he's getting the first heart. So um, two small stories. However, I believe in life we're destined to do certain things and sometimes we're nudged into taking certain steps to complete that journey and this is a nudging. Um, like I said, Aaron is gone. We can't bring him back, but we're looking to save number 41. Yes. You know, we, yes. could have, we could have taken the approach like most people have where they 
accept it. And it's not that you're, you, you haven't accepted the fact, oh, trust me, I have accepted that my son is not in the house with me on the weekends. My, my Saturdays are so airy because there's like this big void that no matter what I do, it can, I can never fill it. You know, and we could have taken the approach that, um, you know, he's gone, ain't nothing we say or do is going to bring him back. And we could have just gone about our, our, our merry way. But you know what? That's not Aaron. That is not him. And that is not me. And when I, when it comes to children, my, my, I have the biggest heart. Anyone would tell you that know me, that I sacrificed myself for my, my two children. And wherever they are, I'm there and I'm present and I'm giving you 200% of myself. And I still feel, although he is not here with me in the physical form, I still feel compelled to do it, to, to still be there for other children. Even though, you know, my, my oldest child, she's away at college, she's an adult. That was, that was my, my last child before I became that empty nester. And I still feel, I am still a mother regardless. And it doesn't have to be that child. I didn't have to give birth to that child for me to be a mother to someone else's child, you know, and, and with his foundation, you know, uh, it will allow me to do certain things. There might be a mother that needs help. She just needs a break. I'm willing to babysit. It just might be a mother, it, you know, just anything. However one can help, the child might be needing a, a pair of school shoes. I will be willing to help, you know, through my son's phone. Because that's Aaron. You know, in speaking with a parent last night, um, well, it first started in his um, booklet. It was a tribute by one of his friends, you know, that really, really squeezed my heart. When I took the time out to name Aaron and I saw the meaning of it, which was first um, priest of the Israelites, she's the leader. You know, I always tell him when he gets in trouble because of playing around in school, I'm like, dude, you got to live up to your name. You got to live up to your name. And I instilled that in him from young that you are a leader, not a follower. Well, guess what? He was leading his people. Yep. He, he had yep. touched so many children you know, in school and have helped them. And I, I didn't even, I didn't see it, but it wasn't for me to see. It was for the people that he was, his, his peers that he was leading. And now that, you know, now that he's gone, it's like, you know, I am now seeing it because they're now sharing with me the role that he has played in their lives. Why, that's why I have to do this. Yeah, and, and speak to that because I remember when we were speaking yesterday uh you mentioned their students in the states that he was a part of he was a part of so many different groups can you speak to those different youth groups and, and different things that he was a part of because yeah. that also will help people who have children in those groups to, to bring it home it, it could have been any of us yes i and and, and to that i i when i went to new york to see my mom after Aaron was killed um, I was going through her pictures and she had more pictures of my son than I did. And I don't know how she got him. But there was one where he that was taken in fifth grade um, with him at the bottom, two large pictures of him and his entire fifth grade class. And I'm looking at the picture and I'm like, wow, it could have been any one of these children here in this picture. Yeah. You know, it could have been any one of them. Aaron, um, from third grade, he has been in uh, Mala Pernatics. Um, up until fifth grade, for sixth grade, he wasn't on St. Thomas. After the storm, he went to New York. Um, when he came back, uh, before leaving, he was he also joined um, Rising Stars Steel Orchestra. He was a member there from 2017. Um, when he came back in 2018, 2019 school year, he became a member of um, Can Crimes Steel Orchestra. Um, he was also, Aaron has been in drumline since he was in second grade at Moravian School. I used to work at Can Crying School and, and I used to 
I pick him up from school and bring him there until after school is over. And he used to go out exploring the, um, the grounds of this school. And then he came across Miss Pickering's class, you know, her after school class, which was the drum line. And from that moment on, she adapted him. For, so from second grade right up to eighth grade, Aaron has been um, in Kai Klein's 21st century drum line. Um, and then he used to go to Miami after his father passed. He used to spend summers with his uncle in Miami um, and his great aunt and his great uncle took him to church where he joined a youth program that they, they I know they have had um, several meetings where they have sat down with the, the group and because they have only seen Aaron, what, two months out of every year? And they, have, mm. they, they had grown so attached to him. He was such a, a, a great influence to them that they too are missing that boy. They were all, he was supposed to be going to Miami for this school year because a um, couple of days into the, the first lockdown that we had, he said, mom, you can't teach me to be a man. And then I realized at that point, I, was, I didn't have a little boy anymore. He was growing into adulthood. And I've always said that no matter how much we are a single parent to our children, we can never be that father that teaches them certain things. And especially for a little boy, there are things that I can't teach him how to be. I can't teach him how to be a man. So at that point, I was releasing him to his uncle and they were all excited and ready, waiting for Aaron arrival. They were counting down the day till he arrived and then tragedy happened that he didn't make it. But, you know, he, it's, you're talking about Rising Stars, that's what's 200 members, mm -hmm. somewhere around that. Yeah, um, Cancron, I believe the Steel Orchestra is about 30 members and they travel in a group. So it's not just the Steel Band, it's the band, it's the choir, is the jazz ensemble that they have. So you, you're talking about a large number of children. Drumline was at least 20 to 30 boys. And we're not just talking about those that were there with him. Again, he's been in it from second grade. So some of yeah. these young men has already, have already gone on to college, completed college, but guess what? They would never forget Aaron because Aaron was the one that always did some craziness to make mm -hmm. them have to do push-ups. So he uh -oh. He made an impression on on a lot of a, pe a lot of his peers, young and older than him. What would be some of those crazy things that he would do? Because he, he I, I've seen some videos of him. He looks a little clownish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little. He's a lot. Oh my gosh! And I'm and I'm still trying to find. There's so many videos that I have of him that he has taken of himself on whether it be my, my phones or my iPad, where, you know, when he's younger, he's imitating Nickelodeon or he's dragging a bucket in between his sister because she used to love to dance and he wanted to get on the bucket to be in her video. And um, <laughs> there's so many, there was the one, the infamous one of him dancing in my sister's kitchen. That one is ugh, Aaron through and through. And, you know, just the same way how he was, he was that mischievous little boy. I would wake up Saturday morning, I would pull the speaker out because where my office is, his room is right next to it. And I would turn on the mic and I would turn on one of his shake up, kill your mother music. That's what I call <laughs> the music that I just don't understand. And I would try to sing the song and he'd be like, ma, and eventually he'll come out and join me. And you know those are the that, those are the things that Aaron did. Wow. Okay. So, um, you got stories to tell. That's, that's obvious. Oh, but uh, yeah. <laughs> we want to want to baby steps, baby steps. Um, there's time. There's time. And uh, on on Sunday, what can people expect? Uh, let them know the basic information in terms of what time, okay. where to, show, what are the options, and things like that, so that. Uh, they can they can come and support those who can and then those who can't can at least share with other people yes um it's sunday october 11th excuse me at seven o'clock in the morning we'll be marching to emancipation gardens simultaneously from two points of the island on the east end we'll be leaving from tutu park mall and on the west end 
We'll be leaving from Crown Bay. Um, we'll be meeting up at Emancipation Garden. We are also um, in the process of um, getting some t-shirts printed. Um, if you would like to purchase one, they'll be on my page. On the east end is the red shirts. On the west end <laughs> is the black shirts. And if you want to stay neutral, you can wear a white shirt. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll be posting the designs for those um, on my Facebook page and on his foundation page later this evening. Okay, if you could go ahead and repeat the names of, of all of those so that they can know where to go for those who don't already know. Yeah, it's 7 o'clock, October 11th, Sunday, October 11th, 7 a.m. in the morning. We'll be leaving from the East End at Tutu Park Mall right in front of Via where the, the, the large empty parking area is. And in Crown Bay, they'll be meeting up at right outside of Crown Bay. Um, and they'll be march we'll be marching simultaneously to Emancipation Garden. And at Emancipation Garden, we do intend to have a little ceremony. Um, one thing we haven't mentioned yet, there is also a contest. I'm gonna post the the post, it, it's a poster contest. We're asking for the children to create a poster and submit it. Um, um, and the winner will be announced either that, eve, that afternoon, that Sunday morning, or we'll, if we're considering pushing back the date just to give everybody a fair opportunity. Um, that information for the poster will be posted on the, on the foundation page also. Um, and at the serum, at the, once the march is finished, we said it's, it's a march like no other march. We are actually trying, not we're trying, we are going to have, God is going to be present. Where many is gathered, he's, he's present, so he will be there. We would, you know, we'll somewhat not have a, a, a service in the village where we are gathering in the village, where we would be having um, someone, we'll be singing, um, a, a, a hymn will be, um, we'll have a speaker speaking on the message, which is um, reclaiming our village. Um, and we have several other guest speakers there also. What's your name, um, your Facebook page and the foundation? Oh, sorry, my Facebook mm -hmm. name is Andrea Hamilton. The foundation page is Aaron Nicholas, N-I-C-O-L-A-S, Hamilton Ashby Foundation. Okay, excellent, excellent. And um, this is a lot, this is a lot. And, and I know we've, we've done enough now for now, but what do you want people to do with this information, um, with the vision as, as we close out? And then anyone you want to um, show appreciation to that has helped you with organizing the activities thus far? Um, so want people to do with, with, with between now and Sunday, and then in general, and then whoever you need to shout out. Um, with, in regards to what I would like everyone to do, if you can come out, please do come out. Um, if you can't, um, find someone that can come out and support you, or you can, like my sister said, cheer us on when we're passing through your neighborhood. Let us know that you, you see us and you're, you hear us and you wanna partake. What we're also asking, what I didn't mention is, at the march, after all the, you know, the, the message has been delivered, we are going to be asking of the community, all the adults in the community, to take an oath to mentor a child. Um, you know, however, you know, help this child. And if it's to a, a child that you have a, you choose to mentor, that it's um, where it's outside of the scope of what you can handle, you know, reach out to us and we will find that person that can better help you to mentor this child. And like when we was discussing it, when my sister and I were discussing it, um, I said to her, let's not limit it just to here uh, in the Virgin Islands. Let's take it out because guess what? We have Virgin Islanders outside in the continental U.S that can assist, you know, however they can, with also mentoring a child. So, you know, because they're, they too are a part of the village. Um, so let's not leave them out and forget them. So we will be asking 
people to, you know, if you can't attend and you, ch you would like to mentor a child, just reach out to myself. Um, on my Facebook page, you can find my sister Colette at Fet at, Co Fet at Colette on Facebook or send us a, a message. We will get an oath to you. You can sign it, scan it, send it back to us with your information. And we can, you know, build that, begin rebuilding that village, reclaiming that village so that we can help our children. Excellent. Okay. And as far as thank yous, we'd like to thank you for having us here on your program. That was very generous of you. We have so many people to thank. We'd like to thank the committee members. We have an actual committee who's met with us sometimes three days a week for hours on top of hours. Um, we have a nine member committee, I believe. Uh, uh, I think has grown. Yes. Started, yes. Pastor, Monroe's, Pastor Monroe's has been instrumental. Color Max has been instrumental. Marcus, um, Meg. Um, we had donations with, um, for cases of water. Um, we have people who are sending us money and you know who you are. And we plan to thank everyone formally. Um, my nephew had this, um, he was a fan of um, Omari George. We'd like to thank him also. He's coming out. Um, Andrea, anyone else? Did I miss anyone? Uh, the Philip Five, um, Ian Turnbull, Daria Monifa, um, all, all, all our committee members, um, both East, West, and Central, <laughs> all my colleagues, coworkers, family at Public Services Commission who have been there from day one to support me with all my crazy ideas right now that's running through my head and what I want to do with the foundation, you know, and, and definitely the community. Definitely we cannot forget the community because without them, we won't, we're not going to be able to do the things that we want to do. So we would also definitely like to thank the community. Excellent. So as, as we go out, um, just go ahead and invite them again to Sunday's event. And then um, you can say your last message. <laughs> Sunday, July, Sunday, October 11th, and that's the day before the holiday, mm -hmm. um, 7 a.m., we'll start assembling, and we're going to get ready to move off from the eastern end of the island, which is Tutu Park Mall, and then the western part of the island, Crown Bay area, um, and we're going to march to Emancipation Garden. Um, we're going to have a ceremony there, a short ceremony and we're going to invite folks to take a pledge, take an oath, to continue the very important work of saving the precious jewels of the Caribbean. Um, those children of the USBI, we're saving number 41. We're all on this mission. We're rooting for number 41. We got to mm -hmm. save number 41. And potentially nobody knows who number 41 can be. The important thing is to save number 41. We don't need to know who 41 is. We just, yeah. know we're, that's who we're saving. Yeah. Right, right. Because, because again, you're doing this in the spirit of Aaron, but you can't help him physically anymore. So this is for everyone that you're able to help that is still here, that, that hopefully is savable. And as, as many of us as it's going to take to do that, that's that's the plan, and I and I definitely appreciate you both for everything that you're doing to make this happen. Uh, please do give the foundation name again, and then um, we'll just let people go on their merry ways this evening. <laughs> yes, the foundation again. It's Aaron Nicholas N I C O L A S Hamilton Ashby Foundation, and uh, my face my Facebook page is Andrea Hamilton. You can find us both on Facebook. All right. You all have a good evening and I'll see you on Sunday, bright and early. <laughs> early. Come out early because we'll be leaving on time. Yes, 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 yes. And all right. Thank you, for those, thank you for the time. Of course, of course. And for those on thank Facebook, you, thank you. Uh, we, we got innovative right now because the technology was trying to play tricks on us. So that's why you're seeing this the way you're seeing it, but it is being recorded and so it will be uploaded 
um, as soon as the recording is, is finished processing and I'll, I'll go ahead and upload that to Conkshell Media and it's well I'll share it. I'll share it so that it can be shared everywhere and just serve as a reminder for the duration of the rest of the week uh, for those who may not know yet. Okay. okay. All right. Thank Take you. Care. Have a good evening, everyone. You too.